<clears throat> so here's the note I promised you on gravitational potential energy. We had a note on this, but we didn't have time for an example, so I often shorten this to GPE. Okay. So in this question, I'm going to show the, you the importance of a reference point. So here we have a house, and stuck in the eaves trough is a one kilogram mass rock. And it is on the edge of a cliff. The height of that cliff is 150 meters. The height of the house is six meters and to the roof is another 3.5 meters. So in this question I want to find out what is the gravitational potential energy G relative to the following positions. So A, the bottom of the cliff. Okay. B, relative to the top of the house. C. Bottom of the house. And D. At the height of the east trough. If you don't know where the eaves trough is, the eaves trough is here. So the equation for gravitational potential energy that we have is MGH. And when we use this equation, we need to have a point where H is equal to zero. Where is H equal to zero? Okay, zero meters. And in each of these sections, that's what's changing because the mass of the object isn't changing, the gravitational field strength of the Earth isn't changing, but H is changing. Okay? So the difference between these three locations is H. So let's do some calculations. For A, H equal to zero is the bottom of the cliff. So that means in A, H is actually 150 meters plus 6 meters. Because it's the height relative to zero. And the rock is in the eaves. Height is equal to zero is the very bottom of the cliff. So we go ahead and put in EG equals MGH. Mass of the rock is 1 kilogram. G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and H is 156 meters. So kilograms divides out, and we take one times 9.8 times 156, 1,000. 528.8 newton meters. A newton meter is a joule, and if I look at my values right here, the most number of significant digits I can have is two. 
So I'm going to round that to 1,500 Newton meters or 1.5 times 10 to the power 3 joules or 1.5 kilojoules. This is the energy, the gravitational potential energy that the rock has relative to the bottom of the cliff. Now for B, the top of the house, H <coughs> is actually, move this picture down here, we'll see that the rock is actually below the reference point. So here for B, H is equal to zero at the very top of the house, so H is a negative value. It's negative 3.5 meters. That negative just indicates it's a measurement below. Same deal, EG equals MGH, 1 kilogram, 9.8, and you can put meters per second squared or newtons per meter. Either way you are going to get joules. Go ahead, put that in. 9.8 times 3.5, we get negative 34.3. Now here, you will recognize that, okay, that's a newton, that's a meter, that's a newton meter. So the energy that it has is negative 34 joules. So what does that negative mean? That negative means that you would have to do work to lift it up to the zero location. It has no energy relative to what we're speaking about. Okay, so we can go through these. You can zoom out and you will see, okay, that H for C, <clears throat> they're asking relative to the house, so H is six meters because we're talking relative to the house and for D H is zero meters so EG equals zero joules okay let me go back up to the picture so for C bottom of the house we're saying that H is equal to zero here the rock is located six meters above so the height of the rock is six meters. And for D, at the height of the eaves trough, D is saying this is H equal to zero. The rock's height is zero and therefore has no potential energy relative to the eaves. So I wanna show you calculations for that. Same thing, EG equals MGH. One kilogram, 9.8. Newtons per meter, and oops, the height is six meters. Okay, and go ahead and fill this out. Nine point eight times six, I get fifty-eight point eight, and that's joules. We're gonna round that. EG is approximately equal to fifty-nine joules. So, the important thing to notice is that when we look at these three, four values, okay, that the rock hasn't changed location, but our height that we're referencing to has changed, and that's what changes the potential energy. We can also change the potential energy by lifting it or lowering it. But in this case, I'm just trying to show you that the potential energy of an object is relative to whichever point we've labeled, labeled as h equal to zero. If we're at the height zero, then there's no potential energy. If we're below the height that is labeled zero, then we need to do work to lift up there. That's why it has negative work. And if it's above the location we've referenced as zero, it has the potential to do work. 